Hello there and welcome back to the studio today. In today's episode we are going to enter the next stage on this larger portrait painting. So we're going to enter the uh, local color stage and on the palette here we have a very simple palette for flesh tones. We have titanium white, flake white, burnt umber, alizarin crimson permanent, cadmium red medium, yellow ochre, sap green, ultramarine blue, ivory black, and our medium today is Neo McGilp. And if you would like to know exactly what materials I'm using, you can feel free to scroll down to the description box down below. And if you are interested in purchasing the same type of uh, materials that I'm using, I now have affiliate links with Amazon. So each time you click on one of those links, it'll direct you straight to the Amazon page that, um, of which you can buy the same type of material, you know, like the tube of paint and all of that stuff. And if you decide to purchase from those links, Amazon will pay me a small amount. So thank you so much in advance if you do that. So now let's go ahead and mix up a very basic color value web. So I'm gonna be using in the first mixture here, I'm gonna be using the Alizarin Crimson Permanent Ivory Black. So Alizarin Crimson Permanent Ivory Black, and this is gonna be my darkest dark. Going to throw in a little bit of the cadmium red medium now we're going to move up the value scale and what i'm doing is i'm creating my color value web so this is just going to be for the local colors and don't worry i'll show you an image of the model very soon so what i'm describing to you are the color mixtures okay i'm trying to guide you through in a much more step-by-step -step fashion with these mixtures so now that we're moving up we're going to be using the yellow ochre and the flake white and um Flake white has this property of which allows you to use more of it without raising the value too much as you can see now look what happens when we use the titanium white. See how it raises the value without even using that much paint. So I like to use flake white in the middle tones for that reason. So I'm mixing up a kind of um, a orangey pink gradation of flesh tone. Okay so I'm describing this type of local color for the flesh tone for the flesh tones so now more titanium white see how very pinkish this is it might be too pink so we're going to put in the yellow ochre and the way i obtain these color mixtures is by uh, kind of blurring my eyes at the model so this is probably or blurring my eyes at the photo reference so this is probably going to be for the lightest planes you know the ones facing the light the most and then maybe these more red areas are going to be for the uh, the cheeks and then the side planes and then the shadows uh, we might leave the shadows alone we might leave it just in the underpainting color but we'll, we'll see when we get to it so now this is going to be uh, local flesh tone variations okay this is a very simple and easy way to mix up local flesh tones and you can go ahead and tint these flesh tones as well i could tint it more pinkish if i wanted to i, I could throw in the um a lizard and crimson permanent and tint it more pinkish i could make it more orangey by tinting this with the combination of the uh, you know, yellow ochre and the cadmium red medium. And then I could make it cooler and darker if I wanted to with a combination of the sap green and the burnt umber. So now the next, um, the next little color value web that I would like to have is a red-ish one, a dark red-ish one for the lips. So I'm using the alizarin crimson permanent, the cadmium red medium, cadmium red medium, titanium white, and that's going to be it for that. And now the next thing I'm going to want is a gray scale, which is also going to serve for the sclera. So I'm going to use the uh, black and white, basically. So that'll give you gray, right? So black and white. Remember, sclera is the light of the eye. And I want to have sclera dark and sclera light. So since there's already flesh tone on this brush, I purposefully didn't clean it just so that I could have... Uh, you know, some room to work with. And now the pupil is going to be pretty much just a, a dark brown color. So burnt umber, ivory black, alizarin crimson permanent, and that's going to be for the, pu the pupil. So there you have it, basic flesh tone uh, mixtures for, you know, the, the mask of the face. 
local colors for the lips, local colors for the sclera, and then we have a color for the um, iris of the eye. And here we have an image of our model Morgan, and I'm going to keep a picture of her to the top left corner of your screen as we develop this painting. Though so I think in today's episode, we're going to focus primarily on the, the face. Uh, you know, we're going to block in the local colors for the face. So this stage is one of four. Remember uh, a couple episodes ago, I've been talking about uh, just some formal writing that I'm doing on this technique that I'm going to call Yupari's classical technique. So I'm throwing my name in there just to avoid some kind of copyright or, or whatever. So the first stage was the underpainting stage we already have that now we're entering in the local color after that there's perceptual color stage and then the selective render stage so let's go ahead and get a little bit of neo mcgill medium and now we're going to be oiling out only the area that we are going to be focusing on today not the entire thing especially when you have a larger uh, composition such as this one so I'm just going to stick with the, uh, basically the, the mask of the face and we're probably gonna put in some shapes for the hair. Probably a little bit for the neck, but not very much. And a little bit for the hair on this side. And so the local color stage, the local color stage only deals with the average color within a given area. So that's not factoring in the condition of the light, okay? So that's why I was able to mix these colors without having to worry too much about trying to get an exact replica of the color that we are observing from the model. So the idea is to lay down a foundation of basic color that once it dries we will be able to go over it with more advanced color and remember the color is the way that you can really describe the quality of the light and that's what we're going to be building up towards so let's go ahead and get some smaller brushes so we're going to be using a dark brush a middle tone brush and a light light brush we're going to be taking right from the local color mixtures that we already established so that right there is the lightest light and it's basically the titanium white yellow ochre and um, some of the flesh tones that we already had so remember that's why i showed you the mixtures first all right so now the next thing i'll do is i'll get the um the half tone brush so i'm going to be working uh, this little area around the eyes so the, the nice thing about a monochromatic underpainting is that the superposition of color, if that's even the right word, when you add more color over top of a monochromatic layer, it kind of gives you another perspective. So, um, you know, drawing mistakes and things like that will become much more clear now that I will be seeing through a new, uh, basically seeing this anew with the, uh, the flesh tone. So now over here with the half tone brush. And I am gonna have a brush for the, uh, the sclera. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw in sclera light. So remember sclera light was just black and white or just the sclera color is gray with a little bit of flesh tone. And I gotta be careful not to make it too light. But it's not really the lightest value just yet. So that should work for now. And so there's a little more light on the sclera, but I'm gonna choose to use sclera dark for this one. See, even with the darker sclera color, we're starting to get more light. So the thing about the, um, the underpainting is it's really more more for trying to establish the drawing. That's why in this process um, I start off with the underpainting stage. So if you would like to use a transfer drawing or something like that, or some kind of tracings, that's okay too. However, you get the information. The information is uh, it's important to find the information. Okay. So now we're going in with the half tone brush. 
I'm gonna push the light a little bit more over here. See what the flesh tone. So the local color pass, okay, is to focus on the average color around all of these shapes, and that's what I'm doing here. And then we'll be able to see more. Uh, you know, we'll be able to relate certain spots of color next time. Now for the eyelid, I might have to use a smaller brush. So I'm actually going to use the brush that I used for the sclera, just because it's the smallest brush I have. And um, I should explain why I used the uh, oil in the beginning, the medium. So the medium is actually helping me uh, because it, having another layer of oil over this kind of makes the paint settle in much more nicely as opposed to working over top of a dry layer. But sometimes I choose to work on a dry layer. And it also helps to add a little more um, oil. So the Fatoberlin principle with oil painting uh, is just is just about adding more oil as you increase the number of layers. So for instance, this is now the second layer, at least for the face. Okay, it's the second layer, so I don't. So I want to have more medium in the second layer than I did in the first. That's all. Now we're putting in that nice little subtle half tone there. I'll let you in on a little secret, okay? So I do, um, you know, this is between you and me, okay? So I do try to group my brushes, okay, between like light, middle, and dark. But sometimes if I'm going to spend like, you know, a long time in just one little window of tone, I'll actually use one brush. It's kind of hard for me not to do that right now just because I know that it, it kind of complicates things when you use just one brush, but just to let you know there's no one way to do any of this. I encourage as much experimentation as possible. And the reason that um, I'm putting in, like I'm writing some formal information on these techniques is to, to have, you know, a, a solid foundation to teach workshops, a solid foundation for people to self-teach. And it's important to have the fundamentals down. And then you can take the fundamentals and use them however you like. So now with the half-tone brush, I'm pushing a little bit more subtlety into this side plane of the bulb of the nose. Now with the half-tone brush, there's going to be a, even more subtlety over here. It's even darker back here. So um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the sclera again. So I'm going to use the smaller brush and apply sclera dark. And of course we want the color for the, the pupil. So with a different brush, let's go ahead and throw in the color for the pupil. Or should I say the iris? I don't know, should I do the iris first or the pupil? Let's just do the iris. So this is the color we mixed up for the iris of the eye. So that's iris for one. Let's go ahead and add it to the other. So it's a little bit kind of more gray, a little cooler, but it's still brown. Gonna add a little bit more. So I took from the darker region of the flesh tone just to add a little more warmth into that. 
And now it's just a little bit of ivory black. I'm gonna put in the pupil. Pupil on one side, pupil on the other. And now with this same brush into the darker region of the uh, local flesh tones, remember we used the alizarin crimson and the uh, alizarin crimson and ivory black, some burnt umber. Now we're gonna push this dark here. And see how we're able to build these flesh tones very easily. This is very relaxing. I'm gonna get a different brush and we're gonna get the color for the, the lips. And with the medium, see how I'm just kind of dragging the brush across and automatically we're getting the tone. You know, automatically that stays darker that stays lighter, this stays even lighter, just by using the transparency of the paint. I'm gonna do the same thing here, just with a darker color for the lips. I will admit the lower lip is getting a little bit big, so I'm going to use the dark brush. I don't think I've used it yet, but the dark brush just taking from the darker flesh tones. It's a little too red. Going to tint it cooler with the sap green. So remember the basic idea of the palette, okay? It's, it's very important to uh, have some kind of organization on the palette because I mixed up that color value web, okay? But that doesn't mean it's going to stay like that. That means if I want to tint certain areas, such as tinting this tone cooler, I'll throw in the sap green to tint it. And now with the flesh tone, or the light brush, we're gonna get a little flesh tone here. So it's lighter here. It's gonna be darker, and a little bit warmer over here but I'm gonna keep the hue variation to a minimum. That's for the next layer of the, uh, of the face. Now a little darker. Just taking right from the color value web. So now we're starting to achieve more subtlety. And remember, subtlety just means how close can you get the values to one another, yet maintain their differentiation. It's kind of like playing limbo with values. Darker over here. And now for the light on the forehead, we're gonna apply the color in the same fashion. So a little darker and more pinkish over here. And the same color, but just lighter over here. And even lighter over here. Just taking directly from the local color value web. And now the side planes need a little more, a little more depth. So right here, the side plane of the nose with the middle tone brush, pushing the depth a little more. That ought to, ought to do it. So now I'm gonna get a different brush and I'm gonna apply the dark for the hair. So basically just a Lizarin Crimson Permanent, Ivory Black, 
just like we mixed up earlier. And let's go ahead and see how much darker we can go. So remember when we were painting the underpainting, uh, I said it's okay to just go with straight burnt umber in these areas because we'd be able to go much darker when we enter in the color stages and see how much darker this goes. This can go. And I'm going to use the transparency of the the paint. So that, that is, I'm going to leave some of the underpainting to show through to get some of the half tones for the hair. And yes, the, even the hair will have some plain changes. It's a little darker over here. Maybe lighter over there, but we're going to just apply less paint and let the uh, underpainting just make it automatically look darker. Though later on I will probably go and add some more color variation to it. It's just that color variation or hue variation is not the main objective in this stage. So in a way I kind of have to restrict myself because I know I can go in and add the hue variation and get the effect that I want. But I'm, I'm straining myself so that I can uh, have more focus on what I need to resolve in this stage. And that takes a certain kind of discipline that, that you learn. And we're training ourselves to see in a new way. So in a sense, it does take some kind of discipline. And we have to dark for the hair. And I think we just need some more depth on the bottom of the chin. It's nice to have a plan sometimes to know exactly what stage you're at and what you need to look for. Because once you have the technique down, it's just a matter of now just creating the paintings you want to create. Isn't that fun? I think it is. So now we're going to move into the half tones for the neck. Using the, uh, I should use a larger brush, right? But oh, oh, all right, let's get a larger brush. So with the same value, just larger brush. And uh, this is going to be one of those times where I'm just going to use the same brush. Just add more titanium white, yellow ochre. There we have a much lighter plane there for the neck. Remember there is a light source coming from this direction. Adding a little bit more of the flesh tone. And now that I have all of that covered, I'm going to switch back to the halftone brush. Just kind of blend these shapes a little bit to get a softer edge. So with each layer, you do want to have some softer edges and then in the final layer uh, I think that's where you can put in all the sharp edges you want just because it's kind of it's kind of harder to soften an edge uh, but it's easier to you know to, to sharpen it so I'm kind of anticipating the next layer to be built over this one and now it's just a matter of repetition. So we have all of the areas covered now, basically. So that is, you know, I'm looking for a plane such as this one. It was getting a little too dark. 
you know, in comparison to this one, this one should be darker than this one. So in a way I am thinking kind of conceptually. So with the eyebrows, I'm gonna leave them alone. Uh, the underpainting color should do just fine. Then of course we'll, we'll tint them dif a different color in the next stage. I think I did forget the chin. So I'm gonna use the uh, darker middle tone region of the color value web for the flesh tone. And let's just use the same brush. Like I did, like, like I said before, sometimes I, uh, I get lazy and I tend to use the same brush. And then th this is another, uh, you know, an, an example of why I, I say make your underpaintings lighter because now I feel like the color is starting to glow. We're using a little bit of a kind of stained glass effect by letting the lighter layer underneath bring out the color or bring out the, the intensity of the color. So what the sun is to a stained glass window the light of the underpainting is to the uh, local color stage. It just helps the colors kind of shine a little more, so to speak. Let's get this highlight back. So now I've said pretty much all I want to say for the local color stage, but with each stage, um, as the layers develop, I'm going to add an optional closing, closing form stage, or uh, what I'm going to call, I guess, closing up the forms. So closing the forms is optional for this stage, and it was optional for the local, or sorry, it was optional for the underpainting stage. Um, but I didn't do it. Now I, I guess I'll close up some of the forms. But that does not mean finish any of the forms. Closing up the forms just means applying the entire value spectrum. So I'm going to close up the forms for the eyes here, here, maybe something on the nose. I might leave the lips alone. Um, but here's what it means, okay? So I'm going to pick a plane. Pick a plane. Any plane. So I'm going to pick this one here and I'm going to say, okay, if it's going to be that value, then what are the surrounding values in relation to that plane? So I got two things to think about. Okay, what does it actually look like? So it looks like, perceptually, it looks like that value to me. Um, but conceptually, is this plane facing the light more than this one? Is this plane facing the light more than this one? Is it facing the light more than this one? It's certainly not facing the light more than this one, but it is facing the light more than that one. But there needs to be a little more of a subtle kind of a bridging, a bridgeway plane or a transitioning plane from this one to this one. And this is completely optional. And when I did, um, you know, the smaller portrait that we're working on, I think a couple episodes ago or two, I don't know, two days ago, I think it was, we did the, um, the perceptual color pass, which is the next uh, layer after this one or the next stage, should I say. And I didn't close up the forms at that part. And that's one stage ahead of this one. So it's optional, however you feel. If you feel like you have more time in the, um, you know, in the local color stage, then close up the forms. If not, then leave it be. Closing the form is something that we're going to, it's, it's going to be something we're going to want to focus heavily on in the selective render stage, the final stage, just because in a composition you're going to pick and choose which areas you want to render the most and which ones you want to leave be. So now, see how I related this one to this one to this one? So pick a plane, any plane, and then paint it in and then relate all the values to it. And that is kind of the, uh, that's the way to go about closing form.
we do have the entire value spectrum. And by using the entire value spectrum, I don't mean necessarily that black must be here, white must be here, and all the grays must be around here. It just means that I'm now applying, uh, you know, I'm allowing me to use any value I want. I'm allowing myself to use any value I want to describe the, you know, the, the direction of each form with respect to a given light source. So I think that's closing up these forms rather nicely. As you notice, it's not really, um, it's not really too similar to the photo reference just because I'm not trying to, you know, perfectly replicate the photo reference. Rather, I'm kind of using the information that I know and I'm using the photo reference just as a reference. To me, this is a painting first, a portrait second. I just threw in a little bit of light here, now I'm kind of regretting it, so I have to make that darker. Again, closing form is a rather tedious thing to do, and there's a lot of repetitive stuff, so now that I showed you how I close that, I'm going to go ahead and try to close this area and maybe the nose, and I don't know, maybe that'll be it. Now we've closed up some of these forms just like we did over here. Remember all I did was, uh, you know, uh, pick a plane, any plane, and then start to relate the planes around it. So now what I'm doing is just uh, with a clean and soft synthetic brush, just softening some of these edges. So the idea with the uh, and the closing up of these forms, again, doesn't mean finishing it or anything, or, and it doesn't even mean each spot needs to have the entire value range. It just means that I'm now using the tool of the entire value spectrum. Uh, so utilizing every single value that I can and then picking and choosing which values I want to subdivide. And the coloring, again, the idea is to look for the average color, and we already did that among all of these shapes. And then of course the average color, so the local color for the iris, and then with the mouth. So the next time we put another layer over top of this area of the painting, the, uh, the face, then we will be looking for more color relationships. So we will be pushing the, uh, the variation between individual hues. So just a few more edges to soften, and then I think we'll call it I think I, that ought to do it. And that being said, always remember, in a world that can be so negative, be the spark that ignites positivity amongst all of us. I really do hope that today's episode helps you out. I wish you the best in all of your artwork, and I'll be back with our next episode tomorrow.